Hello, welcome. In today's posting is a posting that uh, is basically being born of my need to entertain myself during the coronavirus quarantine process. No, I do not have coronavirus, but unfortunately, due to our dear governor and all our other elected officials, we must stay in our houses, which I suppose does have some medical merit, as we do want to take care of our elderly population to make sure that they do not get the coronavirus and, of course, have major medical complications. So to those of you who are bored like me, I thought I'd put this post up. Today's post concerns researching your target species and your waterway. A lot of people ask me, John, how do you get successful at various species of fish in various different waterways, like lake trout and lake Erie? Who the hell even knew they were there until a few years ago? Well, we knew they were there. The question was, where were they? In what numbers? And with what type of bait would we be able to really raise them up and get some success? Likewise, how can you go to the state of New York and have success with muskie? Or to other states like Ohio and have success with major fish species like walleye and muskie? Today I'm going to give you a rundown of what I do before I fish a new waterway that I think would be illustrative for you and educational for you and would be good for you to use if you are going to contemplate fishing for a target species in uh, a new waterway and to have better success in doing it. There's a series of steps. The first step would be just to determine your target species. Before you go and fish, you got to actually say, what do I want to fish for? Am I fishing for walleye? Am I fishing for muskie? Am I fishing for pike? Am I fishing for lake trout? Determine the predatory fish, the target species you want to get, and stick with one species. Don't say that, hey, if I go for muskie, I'll pull my walleye gear out if it gets boring. Because what you're going to do is you're going to give up too soon. Top Apex predators are few in number. If you look at a food chain and a food web, there are very few coyotes at the top of the web. On land, for example, a terrestrial example, there are a ton of rabbits and mice to feed the few that are up there. It's the same thing with apex predatory fish like muskie pike and, of course, lake trout. Number two, research the prey that your target fish is going to want to eat. That's step two. So these fish have lived in a waterway for a really long time to achieve adult size. They grow slowly in many cases. For years, they've fed on a particular thing in that waterway, and in each waterway, it's going to be different. And after step two here, I'm going to basically show you how you define what prey is in each waterway you're fishing for so you can make your bait look like it and get a good result. Uh, so three, identify your waterway. And then after you identify the waterway where you're going to be fishing, for example, for a pike, or muskie, or lake trout, or whatever, walleye. Identify which prey species in that waterway your target fish is going to be eating. So to do this, that's step four. Identify which prey species in that waterway your target species is going to be eating. To do this, you have to use the internet. We all have phones, we all have tablets, we all have computers like I'm using now. We can look up on the internet on a Google search. It's just really that simple. Uh, the DNR results, or the Department of Natural Resource results for the state in question, the Department of Eco or what do they call it? Environmental uh, Conservation, DEC, results, or in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission results from the latest electro survey of that waterway. So if you were to fish, for example, I don't know, Keystone State Park, that's right down the road from my house, you would say Keystone State Park Lake, Electro survey, and it would come up. The Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission did electro survey. It would show you a list of every particular species of fish that was obtained in that electro survey. It would show you the number of fish for each species, and from that, you can see the list of forage species, like the list of bluegills, crappies, suckers, carp, um, shad. Uh, Hollow wife, you name it, whatever it's there in any given waterway, it'll be different, but you'll get a number of each. And you're going to look for the two or the three most prevalent forage fish in that lake. That will get you a short list as to what they're eating. And then step five would be you got to select a lure that looks like it. Now, this is where it gets challenging, guys, because there's a lot of lures and a lot of junk on the market. You could go with live bait, but live bait's a pain in the ass. I'll just say it. Live bait dies. Live bait needs aeration. And especially if you're shore fishing, that's a pain in the neck if the water temperature gets really, really hot 
and you got to try to find a circulation of water that'll keep them alive in a little minute bucket where they're crowded and oxygen is not exactly prevalent in a crowded minute bucket. They're all breathing. They're all taking up the oxygen that's in the available water. Same thing in a live well. You're running your pump forever. And not everybody has a boat with a live well like me. I could turn my live well into a bait well and get away with it. But it's not that great. Also, the downside to bait fishing is you got to stay stationary. You can't move real quick. You can't move real quick. And you can't cover ground, which you really need to do well, either by throwing with a trolling motor propelling you along or by just trolling cover ground to get as much ground covered to get your bait by a top predatory fish because like I said they're few in number because they're at the top of the food pyramid there's fewer of them than there are forage fish around them so it's always good to keep moving so I do recommend getting a lure but you got to make it look like what they're going to eat and what they've been accustomed to eating for their whole lives so a few things you got to keep in mind you got to get the color right once you've defined your you know list of two or three bait fish in that waterway, get a bait, a lure that looks like the colors of those fish. So find two or three lures that look like each one of those two or three bait fish that you think your target species is going to be chomping on. Number two, get the size right. The size and shape right. For example, if you have a forage base that's basically perch, usually anywhere from four to seven inches long, don't get a bait in the color of a perch that's going to be 13 inches long. For a muskie, sometimes it works, but most times you're oversizing it. A muskie doesn't say, yeah, it looks like a perch. But what the hell is a 13-inch perch doing here? Not very many perch reach that size. They do. It's extremely rare. And a muskie's going to say, man, i got to use a lot of energy to take that thing down. There's a bunch of four or five-inch perch sitting on the side over there. I'm just going to sort of float below the weed line here. And whenever one of those perch comes too close, I'm going to nail it. Or I'm going to float below a school perch just lurking the shadows down on the bottom. When the perch gets scattered by a boat or something coming by, bam, I'm going to grab one of them. See, they're smart. These predatory fish are smart because they've lived a hell of a long time. So you got to get the size right. you got to get the color right. you got to get the shape right. And it's got to move right. And you can look on the websites of various different purveyors of tackle, outfitters, outdoor shops. They often have photos that show the real-life size of the bait in question, the color of the bait in question. And then not only that... They may do demos of how it moves with a real life video in a fish tank. All great stuff to know. So, once you do that, you basically do step six, trial and error. You go try these baits out on the waterway that you have in mind. So, you'll have a short list of baits that you're going to take out to a waterway. You're going to try them out trolling. You're going to try them out throwing. Always keeping in mind the speed that would be appropriate for the time of year for that species, fish species in question. And you'd see how they do. Some will work, some won't. If they don't work, you get back to the drawing board. Find another one that's the right size, right shape, right color to resemble the forage base that is in the lake you're fishing. And I guarantee you, you're going to be putting more quality-sized trophy, maybe trophy, but at least quality-sized predatory fish in your boat. With that, that is my post for today, the 27th of March, I believe. Yeah, it's March 27th, 2020. Coronavirus misery continues, so hope all of you guys who are thinking of fishing in the upcoming season get a little bit out of that you can use. Try it out in your local waterway. I may in an upcoming video actually do a demo if I can figure out how to do a screenshot of what I'm looking up from a you know particular Fish Commission Electric Survey and show where I've used it on a particular lake to uh, pick on a particular target species. I think that might be appropriate just to demonstrate how easily this can be done. Thank you. Keep posted. I'm going to start blogging more uh, right here from the war room uh, at my house over near New Alexandria. This is John Stevens and Larry the Lake Trout back there signing off.